All right, YouTubers. Um, my name is Mark, and I am going to do a review of my Ascend FS10 fishing kayak. I've had it for uh, three summers now, so I've had a chance to fish it quite a lot uh, and really enjoy it. I think it's an underrated boat that uh, more people should know about. Uh, it's a 10-foot kayak, uh, and um, those of you who have been kayak shopping may notice that uh, most 10-foot kayaks are really recreationally oriented boats, typically have a multi-chine hull that is a, a slow and not terribly maneuverable hull. I think that that is a characteristic of this Ascend that should be mentioned is it actually is a V hull and you know it's it's plenty wide and it's plenty flat you know underneath so its stability is fantastic but the uh, the V characteristics at both the bow and the stern really do a lot to uh, keep the boat tracking well and keep the speed up you know I live in a place where we have some reasonably big uh, lakes that you can do some trolling in a kayak you know and this paddles at a speed that is conducive to make the trolling successful um, you know uh, it's got built-in rod holders it has a tank well you know I think that the tank well is an interesting characteristic most kayaks like this have um, some sort of dry hatch storage back here that is functional for keeping gear dry but not terribly functional for fishing when you have stuff that you want to be able to get a hold of uh, tackle you know what have you we got uh, some pretty nice uh, foot pedals pegs uh, adjustable length um, there's a dry storage compartment, albeit really only big enough for a phone or keys or whatever. I have a uh, emergency waterproof phone case in here in case I want to use my phone um, out there on the water. The only thing I would really use it for is the GoPro control, but uh, regardless, there it is. Um, this is, you know, you got a couple drink holders, you have some dashboard area, you know, the, this is the original rod holder that came with the kayak. It's a flush mount. The holes matched the Scotty mount. You know, this one actually worked fine. Um, it's a little, uh, flexier when you are trolling with, um, you know a little bit heavier rig and you know also uh, when I did the fish finder I kind of wanted it to be a little higher so the you'll see the, the the mount that I have now is raised up the fishing rod to you know get it out of the way of the kind of stuff I'm trying to do this mount right here is um, for a pan vise mount, it dates back to a like 90s GPS that I had and just happened to be adaptable to my fish finder. Um, you know, back to the original FS10. Okay, so you got bungees. This is the original rod mount. This I am not using, so I'm going to set it aside. Um, these are kind of interesting little divots that you can put your paddle in if you are uh, landing a fish or something like that keeps it from rolling around um, we've got some slots here uh, that are cut into some reinforcement uh, in the kayak that's where the seat goes which kind of gets us to uh, a characteristic that makes this a very unique kayak not really unique you're starting to see this type of seating on more and more kayaks but 
uh, really much more expensive boats. This boat retailing, you know, in the five hundred and fifty dollar range. So, you know, it's padded. Um, it's got an adjustable back, um, durable Cordura. You know, can't say enough good stuff about the seat. I mean, I've had it for, like I said, three summers, and it really is showing minimal signs of wear. Um, or rubber feet and what have you make it so you can use it on the beach if you want or wherever for that matter we got these little uh, T's that are kind of bolted through the hardware of the high back and that's what locates the seat in those channels in the kayak so let's just drop the seat in there and show you how it works here drops in that's it they're located fore and aft by the, the channels built into the kayak. This leash is intended to wrap around the seat so that if you manage to turn the kayak over, you don't lose your seat. Um, all right, moving on. Now I'm going to, uh, you know, that, that that's the way it comes from uh, Bass Pro. Uh, you know, with the exception of the the mount here and me changing the rod holder. Now we're, we're going to start setting it up the way that I fish it to give you an idea of what we've got going on here. Um, you know, it's got nice little mounts for the, the paddle and, and those mounts actually exist on both sides. You know, and you can hook that just like that and your paddle is kept. Um, sometimes I'll even hook my anchor to this on the other side, um, you know, but you can see functional standard issue kind of paddle keepers. Then like any good fisherman, I've got my milk crate here. So, you know, here's the Scotty rod holder that, you know, I'm, I'm going to install, but I'm. I'm gonna put my fish finder on there first. I got my lunch box here. I'm gonna set that aside and this is my anchor float and my anchor, you know, uh, so we'll just distribute distribute that. That goes there. This is a, you know, a, my anchor line is on a float so that I can let it go from the kayak and still retrieve it. There's lots of uh, instructable videos on YouTube and what have you of how to repeat this system. So I'm not going to go into it. I'm more just going to show you how I set up the kayak for my own fishing. Um, back to the milk crate here. Wrangle this puppy up into position. You know, pretty neat that it's got the tank well specifically for a milk crate you know and the factory bungees actually lend themselves to the task the milk crate here you can see i've taken away some material and there's a tarp tie going from here around some of my tackle and hooked to that keyway well that factory bungee from ascend does the same thing hooks over both of the little keyways and now I can't lose my milk crate when I'm fishing you know uh, standard issue kind of milk crate I got some pieces of PVC zip tied in there so that I can uh, use it for storing my net and you know this is a uh, monopod it's got a uh, GoPro uh, mount there and you know standard tapered thread you know and that's gonna screw right into position there once you get it tight you've got your monopod for your GoPro and you know that there I can maybe I'll do a video later on how I did that but you know mostly PVC fittings um, my the tarp ties that I have here, that I have here holding my bailing sponge, what have you, 
um, is also there's another one going through the milk crate there that holds my net so that I can reach fish no matter which direction which side you know I typically store them in these rod mounts which you know is I'm gonna move this back here for a moment because this is the side that I like to store the net on I'm right-handed so I typically land fish on the left hand side of the boat um, moving on got a little case here this case I got at a thrift store paid a buck or something for it and this is where I keep my fish finder and got the fish finder the fish finder is using the pan vice mount I mentioned that I had from an old GPS there's actually a bit of cutting board there to get it to the place I want it once it's mounted you know a little hummingbird got it at Walmart paid about a hundred bucks for it um, inside the same case is the battery got the battery in a sealed Tupperware type of a thing the pool noodle inside the case keeps the battery from sliding around the pool noodle outside the case keeps the wire from being able to be kinked that I have in put a little grommet in there and uh, you know you can see I've got pool noodle goes there wires are gonna be safe from damage all right so the wires you know they're going here they go the kayaks got a little you know lip here that I expect you could put a skirt on but so I took another piece of pool noodle little piece right there and um, put some silicone on it and shoved it up in there to keep the wires following back the the stock bolt there was a rivet that, and I drilled the rivet out and put a nut and a bolt and put a, a wire keeper loom keeper under there to to attach the wires and going back the removed the stock bolt there and and put uh, another wire keeper under the nut and then you know some basic zip ties and what have you and you know there I've zip tied the the rest of the wires that go to the transducer the transducer is mounted in a few layers of foam with Lexel that's also that stuff you can figure out how to do on YouTube you know I I uh, watched a few videos came up with my variation of the way I wanted to do it and there it is it's been working it's been working for a couple of years you know here's the the wire to plug the battery into the uh, the finder and then so the battery goes back here you know I can plug it in you can see I can plug it in there and zip it up from this side all the way to here so nothing but the wire sticks out and that goes back there and then I shove my uh, PFD back here and that really wedges it into position not not that that's really necessary because you know I'm fishing flat water the that that thing doesn't move whether or not I take my PFD with me out of harm's way going back to the milk crate here I've got you know my tackle box you know I'm just fishing trout I don't really need a whole lot of stuff and uh, panther martins, rooster tails, that sort of thing. And, you know, the tackle box stays right in between the, the molds and the hole of the kayak. It doesn't slide under the seat. And I've got most of the tackle I'm going to use right there between my legs ready for action. All right. Now we're going to go up here to the fish finder. Kind of work this one-handed. I can, you know, loosen this until it fits there and tighten that puppy down and 
get it pretty darn snug and it still is going to be be able to move for me and you know you get the idea there I can put that fish finder just about anywhere I want it um, wires back here you just plug those puppies in and and there you go and now that that's installed we can we can take this and this fits in this way and that goes there and now I'm ready to troll take my rod out and drop it in there and you know that's a great way to troll in a kayak you get you can watch the tip of your rod you know usually if I'm gonna do some trolling I have a, a line counter reel trolling kind of a rig that I can you know know how much uh, line I have out and you know I actually have a in my tackle box here I have a, a light trolling rig that works really well for kind of trout fishing I'm doing you know spinners a little piece of metal line you know put something like this or something like this on the end of it and uh, countdown sinkers from Rapala you're gonna catch you're gonna catch trout all right going back to my milk crate here you know I got you know you, milk crate anywhere you can tie anything hook anything whatever I got some extra line I've got you know a little waterproof ditty bag and you know here's my tools that I put a velcro strap through the milk crate and these tools can hook there, there's a you know belt hook on it it's a electrician's kind of a tool and that hooks on the strap of the kayak here and there's my pliers for getting a rough hook out and you know I have some uh, fisherman fisherman's uh, nail clipper style tool for trimming line you know sharpening there's a file for sharpening hooks that sort of thing and then uh, you know now we've just about emptied the milk crate back here but 